Hey, what's going on? This is The Doug Show. In this episode, I'm going to answer some questions about the keyword golden ratio. If you missed the previous two episodes, you will want to uh, check them out probably before you listen to this. Otherwise, it's not going to make much sense at all. So let's get to the questions. I'm sitting here in my in my closet. I'm sitting on the floor. I was uh, <laughs> I was actually recording all of the audio at my desk previously, and I was just recording straight into GarageBand. But I have this uh, recorder. It's a Zoom H4n. I got it used off eBay. Got a good deal under hundred bucks. I always like to get a good deal, and. Um, I am aware that audio quality is so important, especially for the spoken word. I mean, this is a freaking podcast, right? So the quality of the audio matters a lot. And over over time, you know, I've done a lot of YouTube videos, but over time, I've realized some of my earlier videos were terrible uh, as far as audio quality. And even the ones that were much, much better, like when I got a high quality mic, a uh, Shure lens hopper that sits on top of my DSLR. Depending on the room that I was in, sometimes the audio was still not that great. It was clear, it was loud enough, but there was still like an echo. And uh, one of my friends, she knows that I've been uh, working on a podcast a little bit. She sent me an email about, I think it was called like the pod booth or something like that. And basically it looks like a, uh, I don't know, like a stand up shower (laughs) kind of thing. I guess there's framing around it, and then it looks like moving blankets are up all It looks like a little tent. It looks like a little fort that you could sit in. It's kind of like a phone booth size, something like that. And, you know, it has all these, uh, like, moving blanket kind of things all around it. Anyway, it's supposed to help dampen the sound. It reduces echo and all that good stuff. Now, the reason why there was such echo in some of the other videos uh, that I was just mentioning and sometimes even when I record in my uh, in my office zone is there's like walls there's like flat hard surfaces and a lot of the videos that I did I recorded those like in my living room area or in the kitchen or the dining room is all like one big open space it's wood floor fairly tall ceilings you got big windows in there there's all these areas that you're going to get an echo which is exactly why when i went back to listen to see you know what the audio quality was like it was a little weak hence i'm sitting on the floor in my closet with my zoom h4 and there's clothes all there's clothes hanging up all over there's not that many surfaces that uh, the sound can bounce off of. So hopefully there's less echo here. Now, a lot of this is just, you know, like normal self-indulgent. I'm just talking about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, But it's not bad to sit on the floor. And actually, uh, my good friend Georgie, the dog, the Border Collie, is sitting with me here. So I could also, you know, be a little closer to her sitting on the floor with her. All right, so today we're going to answer some questions about the keyword golden ratio. And if you haven't snagged the template yet for the keyword golden ratio, as far as making the calculations, you can go to nichesiteproject.com, click the green button, enter your name and email address. You will get an email from me that has a link to download many different things. One of them, keyword golden ratio calculator. Additionally, content templates are available. And the content templates are um, sort of like my bread and butter to, you know, get a lot of content published. I'm not doing the writing myself. I'm not doing a lot of the details myself. But if you're able to hire writers effectively, then you can get a lot of work done. So you can get a hold of all that stuff. And these questions that I'm going to answer, they are from Niche Site Project, my blog, There's a blog post, actually there's several blog posts that talk about the keyword golden ratio and people, they ask questions in the comments. So first one is from Al Zufri, Al Zufri, and uh, he says, what if I use the global monthly search volume instead of the local monthly search volume? What's the impact and the difference in ranking? Currently, um, he says, He's using uh, the KGR for his uh, foreign, and I take that as a non-U.S. based site. All right, so first of all, I think we should say, we should just declare that 
the KGR is primarily, especially the 250 limit, is primarily targeted at you know U.S. traffic, hence the local monthly searches. So I think if you apply the KGR in other localities, right, in other Google versions, you may end up with some different results. I think in general, not always, but I think in general, the other Google uh, platforms, I guess other geographies is the right way to say it, I think those are going to be a little bit less competitive. So maybe you have some more flexibility. So Al Zufri is saying, what if I use the global monthly search volume? What is the impact and the differences? The answer is, I don't know, because I've never tried it the other way. I've never tried to use the global search volume. But my hunch is it will probably give you similar results. And my advice is to apply the formula as you you know, as it states, um, using the local monthly searches and target something, right? Because most people are going to be using some local version and then tweak it from there. Once you get some data, you can tweak it from there. In a lot of cases, that's sort of my go-to answer. If I don't know the answer, the answer is you, you should try it, see how it works out for you. And then you'll have some data, data point that you can go, um, you can go after. All right. And, um, <laughs> you know what, uh, we may as well digress a little bit. I see, I, um, I didn't answer the question fast enough. Um, and this is from several months ago, maybe even a couple years ago. Um, Al Fru- Al Zufri says, well, it looks like we have the same low qu- class questions and even worse asked by noobs like us. So Doug prefers to go, um, so Doug prefer to go to that expert guy who commented and uh, no need to backlink. No. All right. He's, he's losing me. He, it's just falling apart. I'm trying to read this, but there's a lot of missing words. So anyway, I didn't answer this question fast enough for this person. It took me like two days. And then um, my response, again, this is just a uh, pure digression. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I replied back and said, for the people that happen to be reading along, Al Zufri sent me a rude email for not replying to his comment fast enough. And then I said, hey, sorry, this is uh, how I replied to the comment. It was a fine question and one that I didn't think of. I just got back from vacation, so it took a little time for me to reply to your question. In fact, I thought I thoughtfully reflected on your question so I can give you the best answer possible. Anyway, that um, is why uh, Al Fruzi um, gave me that weird sort of rude comment there. Anyway, moving on to the next question. Sammy says, I'm having great results with a KGR and it really works. I have one question. Do you go for keywords that are plurals of high volume keywords? And, uh, you know, the specific example doesn't really matter, but the answer, um, Okay, the second part is, would you still go for this or would Google just treat them as the same? Yeah, basically, um, Google is most likely going to treat plurals exactly the same as singular words. In fact, if you you know look at the SERPs and you see um, the results for a singular term versus a plural term or phrase, um, usually keywords or phrases of some kind, you're probably going to see the same results like 90% of the time and you may see a couple a couple of the sites the results shifted around so maybe uh, something ranks fourth one in in the singular version and it ranks fifth in the plural version so Google pretty much treats them the same all right next question is from Michelle do I avoid all the keywords with more than 250 local monthly searches because they are not valid for the keyword golden ratio calculation? Or do you try and rank them once you've targeted all the keywords with a KGR of 0.25 or less and less than 250 local monthly searches? All right, good question, Michelle. The answer is I don't uh, avoid anything, right? So the keyword golden ratio is a great way to get started with a site. It's a great way to get traction on a site that's brand new, especially, especially if you are new to internet marketing. What you don't want to do is get started with a site and then work on it 
blindly adding content, doing a bunch of work, investing money, investing time, and then not really having anything to show for it. The keyword golden ratio allows you to rank a little faster for some terms and potentially get some traffic and potentially even get some sales. And there are many examples if you just start looking through the comments of some of the YouTube videos, if you start looking at the comments, um, anywhere the keyword golden ratio is mentioned, you're going to, well, you'll find two things. Some people are going to say it's horseshit and it doesn't work. And then there's the other group of people that have tried it and they're like, yeah, it works. It maybe doesn't work a hundred percent of the time, but it at least gave me a, you know, a target to shoot at and I see what's working and I can execute more. And the best part is you get a small win early. So when you're telling your spouse, when you're telling your friends what you're working on and they ask you, well, you're spending all this time, you're spending all this money. Have you uh, gotten any traffic yet to your site? Have you made any money? You can say, you know, there's a tiny bit, like there's a trickle, it's working. I've made, you know, $3.50 and, um, you know, I spent $100, but I made $3.50 and now it's a matter of doing more of what's working. So to uh, continue answering Michelle's question here, I, I go for higher volume search um, terms as well. Those are great. They just take a little bit longer and maybe they require more backlinks before you could rank. Maybe it requires longer content. Again, if you're starting a site from scratch, you're brand new to internet marketing, you may not be confident enough. You may not even have, you may not know how to write a post that's like 12,000 words long that makes sense. That's overwhelming. That's like the size of some short books. All right. So I go for higher volume search terms. Yes. I go for uh, lower volume search terms. Let's say I have a site that maybe I, I see most of the content is targeting higher volume search terms. Well, maybe then I uh, dial it back a little bit and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to go after everything that has less than 50 searches per month because it looks like there's not that much competition there. I see that often. And I think that's a good way to look at it. Like, hey, where where is the market, um, you know, less competitive, right? Where's the market less competitive? That's what the keyword golden ratio is all about. But like I said, I go for whatever. And if you can, if you're in it for the long haul, you can go ahead and go after some keywords that are, you know, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 searches per month. And maybe it takes you a couple of years to rank number one. Maybe it takes hundreds of links to rank number one on that, but it's going to pay off big in the long. All right. Next question is from Carl. Carl says, I uh, I think you're doing great work here. I want to ask you about a completely new site. And if I only publish keyword golden ratio content without backlinks and no blog commenting, will I still rank for those keywords? All right. The answer is, I don't know. Um, I could say yes, because I've seen examples of people who published KGR content. In fact, there's a few great examples on uh, my YouTube channel, people that I've interviewed. If you just search for like keyword golden ratio success stories, that's what you'll find, right? So you should find some great examples of people that just publish content and literally do no backlinking, not even blog comments. So there are plenty of examples in a few of these examples are people making thousands of dollars per month. All right, thousands of dollars per month, month over month. So yes, it's possible. However, I have heard of just as many examples, maybe even more examples of people who have used the KGR and they're unable to get traffic. Now, why is that? Well, upon further analysis, I usually find that they've made some mistake. So maybe they're keyword stuffing. Here's, here's one of the most common things I see. Someone uh, finds like 50 KGR terms. They publish 15 KGR, or sorry, 50 KGR articles on their brand new site. And they've invested all this time, all this money, and they're using the Yoast SEO plugin, which is a fine plugin um, if you're using it properly. However, a lot of people don't quite use it properly. So for example, let's say the keyword, one of these posts, um, for one of these posts is best ballpoint pen for bullet journaling. 
All right, best ballpoint pen for bullet journaling. That's a lot of words. What is that, like six words? I didn't count it when I said it out loud, but it must be something like six words. And um, if you put that into the target uh, keyword in the Yoast SEO plugin, it's going to tell you to use that keyword a lot. It's probably going to tell you to use that long phrase several times, maybe a couple percent. Now, when you do that, that's basically keyword stuffing. So why is Yoast telling us this bad information, right? Well, the Yoast SEO tool and all the other SEO tools for that matter, like uh, the plugin rather, those are made for the general population, people that are just blogging, they're putting out some content. And usually the keyword that uh, someone may be going for is like ballpoint pen, right? They're not doing this advanced, deep keyword research that we're talking about. And if you're listening to this, you've probably already gone through a couple hours of keyword golden ratio content. So that said, I mean, you're an expert at this point. You're an expert as far as the knowledge of uh, like long tail keywords go. All right, this is advanced stuff and most people don't get into this level of detail. Hence, the tool like the Yoast SEO plugin is not built for advanced SEOs like us, right? There, it's made for just the general population. So if you use best ballpoint pen for bullet journaling, um, as many times as Yoast recommends to get the little green lights or whatever they use, you're going to be keyword stuffing like crazy. Um, it's going to read really unnatural. And basically, you're not going to rank in Google. So like I said, there's just as many examples of people using the keyword golden ratio and saying it doesn't work. Well, it's because they made some mistake that they didn't realize that they were making. So some other issues you may have is like too many affiliate links in your in your content. Maybe you have only, maybe you have like 90% product-related affiliate uh, content in your site. So there's all these like on-page and, um, yeah, I guess primarily on-page SEO problems that you can, um, like just mistakes that you can make and you may not know that you're making a mistake and you would, you would maybe look at the information and you're like, well, I tried to use the keyword golden ratio no, it, and it didn't work. Well, the problem with that assumption is there's like hundreds of other people that are like telling us that it is working. So that means there's probably, and th- this is via the, you know, YouTube comments. It is via, uh, you know, Facebook groups. I mean, you could even, if you look around, I'm not a part of many Facebook groups, just not my thing. But like, if you look around in some other Facebook groups um, and start checking for the keyword golden ratio, or even on Reddit, if you start looking around for the keyword golden ratio in in usage and uh, success stories and all that stuff, you're going to find hundreds of people that are doing really well with it. And in my opinion, that means there's probably thousands of people doing well with it because there's only a small fraction of people that are actually vocal about what they're doing, what they're executing, and the results that they're seeing. So that said, there's a lot of people that are making it work. Um, If you've used the keyword golden ratio and it's not quite working out for you, you probably made some mistakes somewhere. So hope hope not, but you probably made some mistakes somewhere. This next question is from my man, Agers. Agers says, hello, I'm a huge fan of all the stuff that you do and share, Doug. Oh, that's, that's nice of you to say. That's really kind. I also learn a lot from uh, your webinars and blog articles. Uh, and I, you know what? I'll just keep reading all these uh, compliments. It's fantastic. All right. Further, uh, Ager says, I'm using the KGR and I've had great results, but one question. How can I calculate the KGR if Google shows zer- zero searches um, per month, but people actually do search for this term? Google shows this term in the suggested searches. Any tips, any suggestions, and he says in his niche, there's a lot of these kind of keywords. All right, this is an excellent question. This is basically, what do you do when the search volume is zero, um, especially when it's an auto-suggest, and that's what Agers is telling us here. So basically, there there are three scenarios where I'll go for a zero search uh, volume. And th- again, this is a common question. It comes in a lot of different forms. So, and I think you can also like reverse engineer the question and this will apply to many other cases. So basically if it's a zero search volume, um, and it's a Google auto suggest, I'll go for it. 
I don't calculate the KGR, all right? So I, if it's an, a zero search volume, the formula falls apart. So I don't calculate it. I don't consider it. And I'm just thinking, hey, you know, Google is telling me that um, this is a decent piece of content. So I'll go for it. Now, I Google it first, right? I Google it first and see what the results are. If all of the results are just like these fantastic sites um, that with huge authority and it's obviously well served, then uh, maybe I skip it, all right? So maybe I skip it if it's an auto-suggest and the competition looks really tough. Uh, the other time I'll go for it, this is number two, is if it's a related search. So, you know, that's uh, very similar to a Google auto-suggest. Google is telling you people are searching it and, it and there's a related search. So if that's a zero search volume, again, I'll Google it, see what the competition's like. Usually I'll go for it. And the last reason, this is uh, less common, but if I just know it's a good piece of content, if, if I know it's a good piece of content, then I'll probably go for it. And in those cases, it's something like, um, uh, actually, if you think about my internet marketing blog, Niche Site Project, I created a whole frequently asked questions section. I haven't counted the words, but I think it's a, at least a, you know, several thousand words. Some of them are shorter form, but I put a lot of time into creating that Q&A section. How did I know those questions were asked? Well, basically, I did a ton of YouTube live streams, and I just kept hearing the same questions over and over again, week after week. And um, people still ask them, right? They're valid questions or very common questions. And the thing is, if you were to search for these terms as far as a search volume, I mean, they're long phrases like actually this question that we're talking about right now, what do you do with a search volume of zero? It's a long phrase. Generally, it is a zero. I haven't checked, but I think it's a zero search volume term there. And basically, I knew people were asking about it, so I created a piece of content on it. So if you know it's a piece of content that people are looking for and you, and you just know because the niche is good, then yeah, you would go for it then as well. A couple more questions here before we wrap it up. So next is a question from John. He says, I have been reading your blog post for a while and I'm interested to try the keyword golden ratio. I, oh, sorry, I have tried the keyword golden ratio method and I find a few long tail keywords. John's question is, how do you put it into the article? Is it a must to put the keyword in the title of the article? Any tips? So yeah, you want to basically put the keyword phrase that you find into the title. You can potentially add some other words in there to make it sound right. You know, you don't want it to be improper grammar or anything weird. Additionally, you can put some, you know, something more interesting from a copywriting perspective, like, you know, the top five uh, pens to use for bullet journaling. And most of them are under 20 bucks, you know, something like that. Or most of them are very cheap or something like that. So you can, you know, spice it up a bit if you want and the other thing, so I use the KGR in the title and then I use the KGR one other time in the copy. The rest of the time you can, you know, just write normally. And in fact, I try not to use the term too much because what you don't want to do is keyword stuff. Next question is from Dan. Dan says, thank you for the useful information about the keyword golden ratio. I started doing keyword research and I have two questions. Number one. Assuming I find a keyword with less than 0.25 for the KGR, does it matter how many links the top five sites have or referring domains? And let's say the KGR for keyword X is very low, but the top five sites have a lot of links. Will it still work? All right. So I'll, I'll answer that before I go on. So I won't forget what I'm talking about. So the real answer is, does it matter how many links the top five sites have? Yeah, it, it does matter on some level. I think what John is really, at, or Dan is really asking is whether or not he needs to check how many links. My answer is no. All right. I, th I think it's more important if the specific article is providing the answer 
to the searcher. So you have to have the searcher in mind. Do the number of backlinks matter? You bet. I mean, the number of backlinks, I mean, that's important, but that's not the primary factor that we're looking for when you're trying to execute on this keyword golden ratio. So will it still work? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes it won't work, um, but usually it's a variety of factors. So just looking at the number of backlinks is not enough to tell you like yes or no for a particular term. My advice would be, you know, give it a shot, try it out, see how your site does against some of those bigger sites, especially for, you know, certain terms or categories. Second part of Dan's question is, let's say there are only two all entitled sites for keyword X and the KGR is less than 0.25. Does it make sense that none of the two sites are ranked in the top 10 or the top 20? Wouldn't you expect to see the two sites which follow the KGR rules at the top? That is a good question. So I haven't done like in-depth analysis on that sort of thing, trying to you know figure out why those, those uh, certain sites don't rank. I would take a look at the content I would suspect the content sucks or is maybe like some sort of a spun content site. In other cases, you may find that um, the site has weird backlinks. I'm thinking you're probably going to find something unusual with the site um, on some capacity. So, and again, I haven't spent time investigating it, but what I can tell you is that like if you are putting out good content, I have seen it work in the other in the other way. When you publish good content, I've seen that work just fine. So, you know, the question is, why aren't those sites ranking? I'm not sure one would have to investigate that. But in general, I mean, you're applying logic properly here. It's like, well, if the title is so important, if these sites are adhering to the title, if they're going after the terms that we deem underserved on the internet, well, why aren't those sites, if there's only two, why aren't they ranking like in the top 20? And I don't know. I, I would guess there's some sort of like on-page SEO issue or off-page SEO issue. All right. Thanks a lot for tuning in this time for the Doug show. Really appreciate it. And if you're new to the show, if this is like the first episode that you listen to, welcome. Please subscribe. If you are a longtime listener, or even if you're a new one and you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Please, uh, or, or wait, that's YouTube. Please subscribe. Please leave a review and also tell your friends about this. So I, uh, I think the keyword golden ratio is a great way to uh, like get started with keyword research and getting some early traction for your sites. So if you know people that are in that situation, uh, maybe they're, they're having a tough time getting traffic early on, send them my way. Send them to uh, episode one of the episode as well. So we'll see you around and uh, we'll catch you next week.